Hi, I'm Dennis Ferraro with the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with the School of Natural Resources, Fishery and Wildlife Options. This is American alligator, not full grown by any means, but notice this does have some fairly sharp teeth and they can grow those teeth again. They actually are in sockets, unlike any other reptilian. Crocodilians, like these, have very hard claws and they like to bite, but one thing they can't do is open their mouth, it takes hard pressure. So the best way to get them, and you shouldn't do this unless you're experienced or been with somebody, especially for any gator bigger than this, call a professional. But if you're a NUCO or someone who has to control an alligator in someone's yard and it's fairly small like this, by going like this, you want to keep the body still. This animal can switch around. If I came up to it and grabbed its tail, its mouth would be there before I knew it. Or if I came up to its head and was not holding the body, the tail would whip around and get me before I knew it. All these little plates and scales, okay, are very tough and hard. They can easily rip right through thin clothing or your skin. One thing about the alligator, if you hold it up, not too far, it has a hard time opening its mouth. Now it's going to try to push its head back and forth, but what you, one of the first things you want to do once you get them stabilized is to keep that mouth closed. Now remember, they're not going to take a chew, they're going to grab, grab you, and then by grabbing you they're going to rip off a piece, and if you're in the water they can almost even do a death roll and rip off a limb. So we're going to use some waterproof tape, sometimes I use Velcro uh, for these little ones, and now it's fairly safe at that point. Um, they like to eat in the water, but they can also eat up on land, and being the fact that more and more become common in suburban areas, things like small dogs and cats become a food item, even though they, they like to eat fish and other waterfowl and other animals in the water. They do mate in the water, almost entirely all alligators mate in the water. I want you to look at these claws, how big they are, giant claws, easily can scratch. So once you have them stabilized, you notice my knees are behind the front appendages and my back legs are squeezing the back appendages to hold the body still. This tail is very sharp along here, can easily rip open somebody. So once I have it stabilized, I can keep the head down until I, against the ground until I get to a point where I can grab it and hold it closed, come up a little, makes it harder for them to open, and then wrap it shut. Once you're going to transport them, you want to be very careful. Something like this is probably be something that weighs about 50 to 75 pounds. You probably don't want to have anything bigger than this for one person, uh, but sometimes people need to uh, take care of some that are up to 100 pounds, but that needs to be very experienced because they can really tear into you. I want to watch, let, you, let this animal walk a little. I want you to watch how it walks. It's not like any other reptile. It has almost a vertebra column that's like an I-beam. It, it walks above the ground, and by no means is it slow. Let's see if we can get him to get up and walk here. Another thing we do is it learn about looking at the stomach content of these things. Are they a pest in the area they are? And what animals are they after? That is a matter of lafage in the stomach, putting a tube down the throat into the stomach and putting the an animal on an incline, almost a board, and then flushing the stomach content into a bucket below. And this allows us to look at what the, stom the stomach content of the animal. But I just want you to definitely look at the formal part of this animal and the damage it can do to somebody even at this young age. Best way to stop it if it's walking away, first if you, can, if you can, you can get it down against the ground and then get it down, get his mouth, okay. Then to transport you can tape the limbs back and this doesn't hurt the animal permanently but you're taping both limbs back like this on the back. We're not going to do it to this poor guy, just show you. If you pick him up, remember that tail is a formal part, and get that tail under control. So see how he wants to whip that tail. That tail has all the muscle and meat. You want this tail under control, you want the mouth closed, and the front appendage under control. If you have to snare pull, it's best to have two people and snare pull both the tail and the head. If you had to do one area, I definitely get the snare pull and keep that mouth shut, and then move it along from that part, knowing that that tail can come around and whip that pole right out of your hands. As long as you know that.